The song's called Anthem for the Year 2000. Youth Against Establishment, pretty much. Just very serious um, against politicians. It's time for the youth to take over. Neon Ballroom is Silverchair's third studio album and was recorded between May and October of 1998 and will go on to be released the following year in March of 99. Produced by Nick Launay, the album was recorded at Festival Studios in New South Wales, Australia, the same place where the band had recorded their first two albums, Frog Stomp and Freak Show. Singer and songwriter Daniel Johns commented on how Neon Ballroom was much more of a personal album than their first two records. And how with Silverchair songs, the music would usually come first, then the lyrics. However, with Neon Ballroom, it was the other way around. It is, it's very serious. It's a lot more personal than other albums. And it confronts some very uh, confronting issues. So, it was, so was it harder to write? Yeah, I was written in it, um, I approached it, writing it differently. The last two albums, um, we wrote music and then I wrote lyrics over the top, but this time I just wrote uh, like 112 poems in three months and just wrote music around the poems and then put the poems into a lyrical format and then that was it. That was songs, that was Neon Ballroom. Silverchair experimented more with their sound on Neon Ballroom than they had on their first two albums, adding various electronic effects to their songs as well as string sections and piano. When I was writing I pretty much had a clear vision of what I wanted every song to sound like, so I had some instrumentation in my head and just had meetings with people who were arranging the parts and told them exactly what I wanted, the kind of discordant um, manic piano parts and lush beautiful string sections and just decided to keep guitar a more subtle instrument on this album rather than a dominant force like it was on the last two albums. The band would collaborate with famous Australian piano player David Halfgott to play on the opening track of the album, Emotion Sickness. If I had to pick one song off the album which was the essence of this album it would be Emotion Sickness. To me, that's the song that I'm most proud of since I've been writing songs. So to have someone like David Health got play on it was just like, I was like a dream. We deliberately put it as first track on the album so people expect the first song to be some big techno remix hardcore thing and they hear this manic orchestral piece, they'll just be like, OK, cool. <laughs> Well, I think it kind of sprung about by itself, you know, the whole uh, new, old mixed together, Neon being new, Ballroom being old. With the 12 tracks on Neon Ballroom, you get a perfect mix of rock and instrumentation blending together, forming this new and awesome Silverchair sound. You've got your big hitters on there with songs like Anthem for the Year 2000 and Spawn Again, mixed in with softer moments like the tracks Anna's Song and Miss You Love all combining for a very diverse and unique sounding album. Neon Ballroom debuted at number one on the Australian Albums Chart and peaked at number 50 on the US Billboard 200 chart. The album was nominated for 10 ARIA awards and was certified gold in the US with sales of 500,000 copies. The band toured extensively in support of the album, propelling it to even stronger worldwide sales than they had achieved with their previous album, Freak Show. To date, Neon Ballroom has gone on to sell 2 million copies worldwide. We are you Four singles were released from the album, Anna's Song, Miss You Love, Paint Pastel Princess, and the first single to be released from the Elm Ballroom, which was Anthem for the Year 2000, which John says came from a dream he had. I was asleep one night and I, I was having this dream that we were playing this huge like Wembley Stadium thing. I've never, I never really have such vivid dreams 
and everyone had their hands above their heads clapping. And I woke up and it was like 3.30 in the morning. I was like, oh, I've got to write a song so people can do that because we're going to play stadiums. <laughs> so I just went and wrote this big anthemic kind of rock song. And, yeah, that's what came out. The most personal song on the album and perhaps the most personal song that Daniel Johns has ever written was Anna's song. In 1999, Johns announced that he had developed the eating disorder anorexia nervosa, and this was due to anxiety. He revealed that his eating problems developed from the time of Freak Show, and that when Neon Ballroom was written, he hated music, really everything about it, but said that he couldn't stop doing it. I felt like a slave to it. John sought therapy and medication, but felt it's easier for me to express it through music and lyrics. I've always just written songs according to how I felt. I just wrote exactly what I felt. I've never really compromised any of my integrity for the sake of not being so targeted by a certain group of people. So that song, I was kind of warned by people that, you know, this could be a mistake lyrically, but... I've never really compromised and I'm not prepared to do it on this song either. And I think it'll help people more than people realise. Another notable track from the album is the song Spawn Again. This song was originally released on the 1997 soundtrack to the film Spawn. However, the Neon Ballroom version is a complete re-recording of the song containing additional lyrics and is also retitled Spawn Again. Satin Sheets was originally called Punk Song Number no. 3 and was even a contender for their Freak Show album, and the song Paint Pastel Princess that was originally titled All the Same to Me. Johns wrote all the songs on the album except Spawn Again, which he co wrote with drummer Ben Gillies. In 2019, for its 20th anniversary, Neon Ballroom was given a limited edition. 3,000 copies vinyl release. The album was released on transparent blue vinyl with individually numbered copies. So, Neon Ballroom, well, there is a lot to like here. Definitely a different take from their first two albums. Silverchair really trying something new here. It's a perfect mixture of a new rock sound for the band mixed in with that orchestral stuff and the piano and those experimental electronic sounds you had going on there. So this really was the next step up for Silverchair. A very deeply personal album for Daniel Johns with songs like Emotion Sickness and Anna's Song. There had been more collaboration with his bandmates on the first two Silverchair albums as far as songwriting went, but for this one, this was pretty much 99% all Daniel Johns. He was like the entire driving force behind this album, songwriting-wise. And is it good? Damn right it's good. It's an amazing album, really. A totally amazing sound. I mean, personal standouts for me would be the first two tracks, Emotion Sickness and Anthem for the Year 2000, Spawn Again, an awesome song. Do You Feel the Same, another great song. Satin Sheets, that's like a really upbeat punk type of song. The only one really on the album kind of stands out. And that last song, Steam Will Rise, that is a brilliant track. Couldn't be a more perfect song to end this album on. A brilliant track. Daniel singing on this album, completely different from the first two heavy grunge records that Silverchair did. He's in the falsetto here, and it's just a total 180 from those first two albums. But it totally works. Silverchair pull off something really awesome here. I've said it before here with other behind the album videos that I have done, but this truly, this album truly is a work of art. It really is. For me, personally, I will always really love those first two Silverchair albums, but this one was different. It went in a completely different direction with the band developing their sound and showing a lot of growth here musically. And as I say, there is a lot to like here on Neon Ballroom, an awesome album. We'll stop as soon as we don't enjoy making music. The music is the most satisfying part of 
is the only satisfying part of being in a band.